Hi there. Welcome again to the SSIS course step by step from scratch. We have already discussed how we have created our database in our last video. So here our database is ready. If we click on execute, we can see like there's no data available in this database. We have the employee ID, first name, last name, address, phone number and email. These six fields are required in the destination. So let's quickly check our source. Our source also have a CSV file as we discussed. The first column is ID, first name, last name, address, phone number and email. So let's get started and create our own ETL package. So this is my IDE and we have to go to control flow to see what to design. This is our old source flow file where I was showing you how to create it. So let's delete that. So now get so step number one would be create add one data flow task, which is here. So add one data flow task here. So in this data flow task, what you can do is like you can right click and you can rename it, rename it with uh, data flow task. Let's say uh, this is our source file. So I'll say like my, this is called my source file. And when this source file has been renamed, this is our data flow. We'll double click it and it will automatically take us to this tab which is called data flow. So let's give it some time. It will take, oh, it's done. So double click and you can see like we have already uh, landed into the data flow tab. So now in this data flow tab, we'll take the source and destinations. So this is our source. Since this is a CSV file, I'll take a flat file source. I right click, I click on rename and then I click a CSV input file. And as you can see, like there's a red cross mark here, which is saying the connection manager is not available. Yes, that is correct. So let's remove this error, right click and edit. Let's create a new connection manager. This is where you can create a connection manager. Basically what we are doing right now is we are creating a connection from our source file to this task. So let's rename it to SSIS source file connection and then we'll choose our file from our destination so this is, this is a csv file this is our source folder we we'll click the csv file now as you can see like first row is the column header that's correct let's go ahead and see the data in the columns yeah it is available so we our source file is successfully read from this task and we are ready let's click on ok and you can see the error has been gone and click on ok and the red cross error is also disappeared now so we are all set with the source file now in this use case what i'm going to do is like i'm going to read the data from source and enter into the destination table and the destination is this table which is right now here if i execute this there's no data available so let's get go back here and the transformation will be uh, our next use case so First, I will show you how to read the file from the source and load it into the destination. And once that is run successfully, as a second uh, step, we're going to add one transformation in the source file and then add the data in the destination. So that is a separate step. So let's complete the first case. So we have the source ready. Now let's take the destination in the other destination. We'll take an idio.net connection. Why? Because we already have the SQL Server database. So idio.net connection is used for SQL Server database destination. If you have other databases, you can use like if you have take if you want to take the file in the in the output of an Excel, you can take Excel destination or flat file or any ODBC de destination. So the whatever what not here. So that's up to you. So right now we are using the SQL Server database. So we, I am taking ADO.NET destination. Here you can see the red cross mark also here. So let's get rid of it. First of all, before editing the connection manager for destination, make sure it is connected to a source. A destination is not completed until unless it is connected to a source because if you right click and edit on it it will say that the component no input component is available so that's why you need to connect it so here two options are available the blue arrow is for the next step and the red arrow is for the error in case if you get the error you can perform a step on this red arrow for example if there's an issue with the source table you can trigger an email or you can record the data or you can record log the uh, issue or error. You can do this by using this right uh, red arrow. And for the blue arrow, you can take it, scroll it down and attach it here. If you still click on this uh, CSV input file, you can still take this red arrow and put it some on error or event handler. But we are not going to do that in this case. So let's get rid of it. All right, so now we have done that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna configure this one click on edit and here we need to connect our new connection manager 
so once we click on new as you can see it is already connecting because it is already stored let delete that let's create a fresh new once i click on drop down in the server name it will start reading the server name from my system and it will pick up the server name which is my sql server database server from my system and automatically list it down in the server name drop down so what we are going to do is uh, yeah here you can see that it is here now we will select our database so my employee db and click on test connection test connection succeeded all right so we are all set click on ok and once it is okay now you can see my employee db is available now which table do you want to populate you can select it from here i want to populate employees table and i can see in the preview that my employee table has these columns you can see like first employee id first name last name address phone number and email all right perfect so this is a bulk option if you want to store or load the data in bulk for example thousand records per transaction you can do that as well so that is why we have checked this so let's do it. you can also configure it later so let's go back to the mapping section in the mapping section you can see like two of the fields are automatically getting mapped however rest of the fields are not getting mapped and the reason is because in the source and the destination the name of these fields are same for example address address has the same name email email has the same name however for the id we have employee id for first name and first name we have a space in the source first name last name and similarly in the phone number so if it is not mapped or automatically we can map it manually you can go ahead in the input column and select id you can go ahead in the uh, this section called first name and now you can go ahead and select the last name address is mapped phone number phone number we mapped it now email in and email has been mapped here as well so now let's click this one and you can see like it has now removed so we are ready our source and destination is ready configuration is done and we are ready to execute our package so let's first check our database do not have any data available no data available now let's go back and execute so in order to execute it either you can press f5 or you can go here and click on start so once you click on start it will initiate the package and it will start executing it so as soon as i have clicked start it will take some time to initiate this execution so let's give it some time so here it is so it started and yeah 100 rows has been successfully transferred as you can see and now you can see it is ready also so you can see this is the number of rows which is transferred from the csv input file to the adio.net connection which is our database in sql server so now let's go back to our table and see whether we have the data or not click here and yes this is performed successfully so we have done our first use case and we have completely uploaded successfully all the data in our database here you can see all the 100 records has been uploaded and our file also have the 100 records if you see here this is the first row is the id and if i scroll down at the bottom we have this 101 minus 1 which is 100 records so all the 100 record has been imported in our database so this is our first example and we have created our first ssis package in order to stop this execution you can just click here and this will stop it so that's it so congratulations you have created your first ssis package and i think this is the first step in the direction where you will be mastering this technology all right so this is all for this video we have created our first ssis package for the source to destination and our next video we're going to see how we can add our transformation step in between and read the data from source do some transformation and add the data in the database so that's all for this video and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and goodbye